we have to know we will reap what we sow. I believe in Colossians 3 and 25. And I may say this very wrongly, but in essence, if you do wrong, you will receive of the wrong, something like that, that you have done. There is no respect of persons. So pretty much in essence, and I am saying it wrong, pretty much in essence, you will reap what you sow. There is a person I speak to, not speak to, but contact. And hopefully that person doesn't mind me saying this. That person is really going through a rough time. And I asked that person, which I kind of knew anyway, but I asked that person, why do you believe you are going through all of this? And surprisingly, that person said, or text, my sins. And that kind of reminded me of how I used to be back in my past when I used to sin so much willfully believing that I guess believing or maybe I did not care I guess believing that doing wrong was benefiting me which it did not well not in a good way I guess and I think there were times when so many bad things, as it seems, back to back would happen to me in a certain time period. I am telling you. And I think I used to think like it was a coincidence. Like, why are these bad things happening to me? Like, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? What am I doing for these bad things to be happening to me? Like, as if I was innocent. I am doing so much wrong, being rude, hateful, bitter, stealing, all that mess, and probably more. And I am wondering why these bad things are happening to me. Come on now, you reap what you sow. You may believe sinning is to your advantage. You may believe when you steal, I used to steal as well. You may believe when you steal, you are actually gaining because since you stole something that is like an ad to you like let's say you stole this pillow with the hole in it <laughs> like i stole this so i gained this is an add-on to me because i stole this pillow here Do you know, I am the person, I am the type of person that believes whatever happens to you in life is no coincidence. It's no coincidence. There was something, and I believe I made a video about it. I saw some money on the floor, and I think it was about $300 in another currency and no was it no no I believe it was in USD United States dollars I think it was 
but I converted it to another currency and I thought, I believe I thought I gained, I believe it was around $300. I thought I gained. I went somewhere later, I think this was maybe weeks later, maybe a week or two later, I don't really remember. And I won't give all the details, but something happened and I had to take a taxi. Well, I guess I didn't have to, but to make a long story short, I took a taxi and I believe the fare was about $300 or more. <laughs> <laughs> so did I gain? Temporarily, I guess, but ultimately, did I gain? I probably lost more. I think so many bad things happened to me because of me wanting to do what is wrong. Kevin, you are a great man of God. You want to do what is right. You are so patient. Why do you believe I am the way I am? Not to say I am the greatest Christian ever, no. But why do you believe I choose to be the way I am? I have tried doing what is wrong not saying I am perfect, I am not, but I tried a life of sin. I tried doing so many bad things. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't. Yes, I used to like chasing after females and doing this and doing that. But in the end, that type of life is nothing like living for Jesus Christ. I am telling you. Yes, I may have less than what I had before. I may not be, I guess, as known to some people as I used to be. I may not dress as well as I used to. I may not do many of the things I used to do, but I can tell you this, I have more peace now. I have more joy. You know, I am somewhat content with how my life is, which I believe I can improve. Nothing is like living for Jesus Christ. Nothing is like it. I could go back to my old ways. I could go to the bars and the clubs and get drunk and mess with people's girlfriends and stuff like that. I could do that. But is it worth it? Is it? I lived that life before, right? And I think I had so much depression, so much anger, hate, bitterness, unforgiveness, perversion, and probably so much more. This may be another video here, but let me <laughs> make it into one, I guess. You may believe doing what you want 
will make you happy, will fulfill you. Okay, if you are trying to live for Jesus Christ now, weren't you somewhat doing what you wanted? Did it make you happy? Did it fulfill you? Did it give you what you believed you needed in life? Probably not, right? So if doing what you want or somewhat of it did not make you happy, did not really, let me say it like this, did not really make you happy or joyful or anything like that, why continue on that path? Myself, I guess I am going to get a little personal. Myself, I think peer pressure is huge. I think some people do things they don't really want to do, but they do it because of peer pressure. And I believe I did so many things because of peer pressure. I believe I started to drink alcohol because of peer pressure. I believe I received a tattoo and did other things because of peer pressure. Listen now, if you have already tried living your life the way you want it, and if things aren't going your way, why continue on that path? Why continue going that route? Why not give Jesus Christ a try? Right? You may say, Kevin, Jesus is so boring. You know, my life will be so restrictive. Okay, if your life is not so restrictive now and you are depressed and suicidal and you are a drug addict, is that freedom? You may believe you are living with few restrictions now, but how is your life now? Addictions and, and anger and hatred and depression. Is that freedom? So how in the world, man, how can you say living for God is restrictive when I believe you will be more free by living for him. You are in bondage by doing pretty much some things you want, but you believe living for Christ is restrictive when you are in bondage, man. It doesn't make any sense. Look now. You may not know too much about Jesus Christ now. So what comes to your mind is probably uninformed thoughts. I think Jesus is like this. I think he is a tyrant. I think he is just controlling. Give him a try. Read, read the Bible. Learn of him. Try it. I can tell you now, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to cook well. How can I give you my opinion of how to cook if I I am a horrible cook. How can I say cooking is so boring and, and cooking is a waste of time 
and you might cut your finger. Let's say I am telling you ignorant stuff about cooking. Let's say I am trying to inform you of something I have little idea about. Like, would that make any sense? Like, how can I... I don't know much about hockey. How can I tell you how hockey is if I don't know much about it? Pretty much what I know, I guess, you, <laughs> you skate and you have a stick and you try to put that puck in the other person's goal. But there is probably so much in the game that I am not telling you about. Aren't you doing the same thing when it comes down to Jesus Christ? Aren't you skipping out on so many details you may not know about, man? Come on now. On the outside for, I guess, the uninformed, I guess living for Jesus Christ may seem boring, may seem whatever, but until you, I guess, get your feet wet, how will you really know? My life in Christ is so much better than how it was when I was in willful sin, so much better. I may have less, but the quality of life I have now is so much better. I am telling you, if it wasn't, I would probably be back doing that mess I used to do in my past, which I hope I never do again. You can't do wrong and expect good to come out of it. Yes, I believe God will bless sinners and the saints, but you will reap what you sow. Sometimes thoughts come to my mind. I am not perfect. I don't do everything right. Okay, sometimes I make mistakes. Sometimes I error. So don't see me as this perfect beam of light. Anyway, sometimes I have thoughts to do what is wrong to people. And much of the time, I push them out. Why? Because, or I ask Jesus Christ to help me calm down or to get over an issue. Why? Because it is not worth doing what is wrong. Even though you may do what is wrong, but to have a lifestyle to continually, constantly do what is wrong Truly, it is not going to benefit you. There is a person I contact, and this is the same person I referred to earlier. I believe I referred to this person earlier. This person tells me what is going on in their life back to back as it seems bad things. Back to back. And I believe I told that person, why not, I forget the actual words I text that person, but why not just serve God completely? I believe that person told me that they are trying, but bad things usually happen or something like that. I'm going to one subject to the next, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think when you begin living for Jesus Christ, yes, I think you are going to be tested. I think as long as you live for Christ, you will always be tested on this earth. So I think that is normal. But I guess I don't really want to use the word trick, but let me use it. The trick is, if you are going through a tough time, do what is right during your tough time. If someone is persecuting you, don't persecute that person back, but do what is right toward that person the entire time. Right? Going back to my main subject, excuse me, you will reap what you sow. And I think that is one of the main things I teach to some people. You can't do folks wrong. Let me say it like this. If someone is doing you well, you can't pay back their good with evil. Hey, you are doing me so well. You are feeding me. You are paying my bills. You are giving me clothes. You are giving me water. You are taking me to the hospital. Let me betray you. Let me stab you in the back. Let me do what is wrong to you. You can't pay good with evil because if you do, I believe bad things are coming your way. And I think I have seen some of my enemies get punished because I think for doing wrong. Not to say I am this special person like this elite Christian star. Look, I am not a very top Christian, I guess I can say. But if the Bible says you will reap what you sow. Is it beneficial for you to do what is wrong? Kevin, I can't help it. Let me say it like this. If there was something you are really, back in my past, I am telling you all stories and stuff now. <laughs> I guess this almost entire time. Anyways, back in my past, I used to like playing Call of Duty. And I would spend countless hours, man, countless hours trying to get better and better at that game. And no matter how good I get at that game, I believe there would be people <laughs> that would be so much better than I. I think the connection has something to do with it as well, like how the internet speed or whatever server, whatever it is called. But as it seems, no matter how good I get at that game or games, someone would be better than I. But I was interested in playing some of those Call of Duty games. I did not play them all. I believe uh, Black Ops 2 was one of my favorite games. And I got really good at that game. Okay. 
What if you took the effort I placed in playing Black Ops 2 in trying to live for Jesus Christ? You would probably be a professional. You would pro <laughs> you probably would be <laughs> extremely strong in Jesus Christ. I think we place effort into things we are interested in and the things we may not be so interested in we may not place as much time so whose fault is that some people may have been going to college and or working a job you may place so much time in studying and college and working what if you would place that amount of time in trying to learn about Jesus Christ? Wouldn't you be better? Do you think you can pray for two seconds before you go to sleep and do that once a week? Do you believe you will become so spiritually mature in like a week's time by placing so little effort into Christ. Come on now. In that Black Ops 2 game, I placed hours in that game. So many hours. And still, I guess, <laughs> I was not all that great. I guess I got better. I thought I was good, I guess, but <laughs> but I was not like perfect. But my skill level, I guess, got better. Why not place that much effort into Jesus Christ? Like how is it different? Like, let's say there is a female or a male you are interested in. Don't some people spend hours into speaking to that person, trying to learn about the person, trying to, I guess, create a bond or whatever. Why not try to create a bond like that, or maybe not like that, but why not spend so much time in trying to create a bond with Jesus Christ as well? Why not? Look now, if Jesus, if God made the earth, if God's word governs the world, why not try to learn more about him then. If the world is, I guess I can say balanced upon his word, if life is ran by his word, why not try to learn more about his word, right? I guess you can learn about stocks and bonds and gold and silver and Bitcoin and all that stuff there. But what good are those things if your life is not anchored in Jesus Christ? Those things are temporary. Those things aren't what? Eternal. Okay. I'm jumping all over the place. I hope all of this makes sense. God bless you.